Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first annual Eldorado County Veterans Flag Retirement Ceremony. My name is Dave Sylvain. I'm a veteran of the United States Army Vietnam Service. I'm currently the adjutant of VFW Post 10165. First order of business, I call on the Civil Air Patrol, uh, Patrol Cadets from Eugene L. Callahan Cadet Squadron 85 to post the colors, please. I rise. And those veterans, hand salute. Hold your hand salute through the national anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Code Title 36, Section 176, states that, quote, the flag, when it is in such condition that it is no longer a fitting emblem for display, should be destroyed in a dignified way, preferably by burning. Before we begin the formal flag retirement procedure itself, we are pleased to have two, actually now three, distinguished guests here with us today. Our first guest is the Honorable Tom McClintock representing our 4th California District in the United States Congress. Congresswoman Clinton. Well, thank you all for coming today. If I may, uh, let me start with this here. Uh, I, I want to, one of the things that brings me here today is to thank the Placerville Fleet Reserve Association for its work on behalf of our local veterans. Uh, it has been a fixture in our community for many years, uh, hosting events like this, but most importantly, looking out for all of the uh, veterans uh, throughout our community and I want to on behalf of a grateful community thank you for that work Dave. I'm going to present this to uh, okay. the commander or the uh, leader of the reserve Dave Davidson. Thank you. I want to spend just a moment or two talking about what brings us here today to to assure that these American flags are retired with the, uh, the dignity uh, and respect that they deserve. What is it that makes these flags so sacred? I mean, they're just pieces of cloth. What makes them sacred is what they stand for. What they stand for is what America's veterans fought for, risked their lives for, many died for. I want all of you to know that the reason why veterans are so revered in our country is because of that, what, what Lincoln called that last whole measure of devotion uh, that they were willing to give for the most important cause in the history of the world, what, what Lincoln called the last best hope of mankind. Uh, we look at veterans the way the great abolition leader Frederick Douglass look back on, on John Brown. Frederick Douglass, of course, born a slave, became the most articulate and devoted uh, abolition leader uh, of his time. Looking back on Brown, he said, his devotion to the slave was infinitely greater than mine. Mine was as the taper light. His was as the burning sun. I could live for the slave, 
John Brown could die for him. The veterans stand out from our community because of that willingness to give that last full measure of devotion. We also, in marveling at that and drawing inspiration from that, have to ask ourselves, what was that cause? It wasn't the flag, as I've said, the flag is simply a symbol of something far greater. We like to say that our, our veterans defended our country, they defended our homes, they defended our way of life, and they did all of those things through nine generations. But that's not the oath they took. The only oath taken by America's veterans is to, is to support and defend not the United States of America, not the United States government. The only oath they take and have been willing to die for is to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And there's a reason for that. It's because the American founders understood that if we ever lose our Constitution, it means we will have already lost our country. What the veterans have done through their heroism in nine generations of, of uh, defending that Constitution around the world on far off battlefields is a responsibility that each and every one of us has here at home. They were willing to die for that Constitution. The least that we can do is live for that Constitution and insist uh, that it be honored and enforced by those that we loan power. The uh, American system of government is fundamentally different than any other that I've, I've known around the world. In every other country, the government is the sovereign, and it loans powers to the people. The people pledge their loyalty to their sovereign. America is fundamentally different. In America, the people are sovereign. We loan powers to our government, and we pledge our loyalty to the defense of the Constitution. And that's a far greater responsibility that each of us hold as the current uh, owners uh, and stewards of that Constitution. And at gatherings like this, when we reflect upon the sacrifices America's veterans made, I think it's important for all of us to take stock in what we're willing to do to support and defend that Constitution here at home. Uh, when he was 29 years old, uh, Abraham Lincoln gave a, a, a remarkable speech to a group in Springfield, Illinois. And he posed this question that haunts us through the generations. He asked, at what point shall we expect the approach of danger? By what means shall we fortify against it? Shall some transatlantic military giant step across the ocean and crush us at a blow? Never. Never. All the armies of Europe, Asia, and Africa combined with all the treasure in the world in their military chest, our own accepted with a Bonaparte as a commander, could not by force take a drink from the Ohio or make a track upon the Blue Ridge in a trial of a thousand years. So I ask again, at what point shall we expect the approach of danger? I say if it ever reaches us, it must spring up amongst us. It cannot come from abroad. If destruction be our lot, we must ourselves be its author and finisher. As a nation of free men, we are destined to live for all time or to die by suicide. What the veterans gave their lives and risked their lives to defend, we have a responsibility just as great to defend here at home. And a lot's riding on that. And I'll close with these thoughts that, that were offered by Daniel Webster 150 years ago. I think they're just as important today. He said, hold fast, my friends, to the Constitution and to the Republic for which it stands. For miracles do not cluster. And what has happened once in 6,000 years may not happen again. Hold fast to the Constitution, for if the American Republic should ever fail, there will be chaos throughout the world. Thank you all for everything you have done for our country. Thank you all for everything you continue to do for our country. Thank you, Congressman. Congressman Conrad, well said, well done. Our second guest to speak is Lieutenant Colonel Edward Ed Swanson. Ed is the um, El Dorado County Veterans Service Officer. He served our nation uh, in the United States Army retired in 1993 after 38 years of distinguished service. Colonel Swanson.
Thank you all. It's my pleasure to be here today. On June 22, 1942, the code became public law 77-623, Chapter 435. Little had changed in the code since the Flag Day 1923 conference. The most notable changes was the removal of the Bellamy salute due to the similarities to the Hitler salute. The Freedom to Display the American Flag Act of 2005 prohibits real estate management organizations from restricting homeowners from displaying the flag of the United States on their property. The Army Specialist Joseph P. Mix Federal Flag Code Amended Act, Amendment Act of 2007 added the provision of the flag to fly at half staff upon the death of members of the armed forces for from any state, territory, or possession who died while serving the, on active duty. It's in accordance with the guidance provided by the National Flag Code. We are gathered to witness the retirement and the destruction of our flag, deemed, those flags deemed no longer appropriate for service. District. Eldorado County District 2 Supervisor, Sheba Johnson. Good afternoon. I want to thank you all for being here. And I know that it's hot, so I'm going to make my comments uh, very brief. Um, it's my privilege to be part of this event. And uh, I want to uh, thank our veterans for, uh, for all the sacrifices that they have made. And I can tell you from um, first-hand experience, from someone who has migrated halfway around the world and experienced something different uh, in a different country, how much it means to me and how grateful I am for everything that uh, you and they have done. So I want to acknowledge a few organizations and uh, volunteers, uh, Fleet Reserve Association, Marine Corps League, um, disabled American Veterans, uh, American uh, Legion, and uh, Veterans of Foreign Wars, uh, post-2680 and 10165, and I also want to thank the Civil Air Patrol. And uh, without the volunteers, it would have, it, this event wouldn't have been possible, so a round of applause for everyone, and thanks again. Thank you, Ms. Branson. We will now begin the flag retirement ritual and ceremony. <coughs> the Wimbledon flag is being retired today represents only a small fraction of those we are retiring. The rest of the 400 plus flags that had accumulated here at the Veterans Memorial Building were transported by Cindy Edwards and uh, Emory Jenser of Chapel of the Pines yesterday to Chapel of the Pines, and they will be honorably, solemnly, and respectfully retired, respectfully retired by fire at Chapel of the Pines cremation facility beginning tomorrow, June 14th, flight day. I quote from a long established ritual, quote, we are gathered here to destroy these flags that have been deemed no longer serviceable. To all you who shall see these presents, know ye that these flags have served well and honorably. Their stars and stripes have been loose to the winds of freedom and vast in the light of liberty. These flags serve as constant reminders to all of us that we live in a country where freedom has been deeply purchased by blood, sweat, and tears, and the ultimate sacrifice. These flags are welcomed, welcomed in and all in the name of liberty, unquote. If I could have a representative of each of the armed forces approach and have me display the first flag to be retired, I'd like to call up Dick Aiken, the United States Marine Corps veteran, Pete Connerford, United States Air Force veteran, Barry Callenberg, United States Navy veteran. And Rich Mulher, United States Army veteran. Gentlemen, can we display this way?
As you can see, this flag is tattered and faded, has been deemed to be unserviceable, and will be folded and retired by fire. Comrades Kellenberger and Aiken, will you fold this flag into the traditional triangular, the traditional triangle, after which Comrade Aiken will retire this flag by placing it in one of the two cauldrons. Thank you, gentlemen. Now the representatives of our local veterans organizations will, one by one, retire a folded flag into the incinerating fires. Gentlemen, as your name and organization is called, please take one of the folded flags which have been inspected and judged unserviceable from the table to your left and retire it. First, representing the host organization, Hangtown Branch 275 of the Fleet Reserve Association, U.S. Navy veteran Dave Davidson. Thank you, Dave. Next, representing Hangtown Detachment 697 of the Marine Corps League, United States Marine Corps veteran, Tony Young. Thanks, Joe. Now we have a last minute replacement representing the Disabled American Veterans, Chapter 63. U.S. Army Veteran, Sal Gigante. <laughs> Sal is a World War II veteran. Thank you very much, Sal, for your last minute uh, stand-in assistance. <laughs> Next representing El Dorado Post 119, American Legion, U.S. Army veteran, Ted Brown. Thank you, bud. Now representing Sierra Nevada Post 2680, Veterans of Foreign Wars, U.S. Navy Veteran Don Morgan. And Don was my main fireman today. Hey, thank you, Don.
Thank you, Dad. And now representing my VFW post, Camera Auto Post 1165 Veterans of Foreign Wars, United States Marine Corps Veteran, Dennis Haas. Former Post Commander. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Lord Fire tender. The Civil Air Patrol cadets will now retire the colors. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you all for your attendance and attention. God bless America. This went very well. I want to thank Congressman McClintock, uh, uh, Veteran Service Officer Swanson, and uh, Supervisor uh, Sheba Branson, and all who participated and all who attended. Maybe we'll do it again next year, same time, same place, only maybe on actual Friday. Thank you. That concludes our ceremony. <laughs>